The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went out along the sea. All the crowd came to him and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the casting post. Jesus said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed Jesus. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners sat with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. Some scribes who were Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with sinners and tax collectors and said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said to them, Those who have, those who are well, do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so we started reading the first reading from the first book of Samuel, chapter 9 today, and uh, it's, uh, as we said, the vocation of Saul, this young man son of Kish, you know, and, uh, and his father was a faithful man. So in a, in a faithful family, you know, this vocation started. And, uh, and Kish said, go out and hunt for the donkeys, you know. And so it seems a simple thing, you know. This is the father asking the son to do something. So Saul started his experience, you know, in disobedience to his father first and then uh, to God. It's only by chance that he receives uh, his vocation, which is a great vocation. So he's only going to look for some donkeys. And he goes first in an area and then in another one. So they are wondering, he and his servant, they are wondering uh, for, for long. And then eventually they see Samuel. And suddenly when Samuel is see, sees Saul, the Lord will turn to Samuel. He is the one. He is the king of Israel. And immediately he will take the oil and will anoint him. No. So only by chance if we could have the best meaning, the most important meaning of our life. But that is not chance. Uh, that is God providence that will lead you if you obey. Imagine if Saul would say that day to his father, I'm tired. I have something better to do uh, than looking for the donkey. Why don't, you, why don't you send a servant to look for the donkeys? Why, I am the son. Why should I go to look for the donkeys? The servant is enough. That would be enough for him to lose, you know, the great vocation of being the king in Israel. Uh, of obedience we talk also when uh, comes in the Gospel, uh, the second chapter of Mark, from the verses 13 to 17, it comes to the vocation of Matthew. So, Levi was not only a sinner, he was a public sinner. Um, and so, well, the vocation of Matthew is also <coughs> One of the most powerful, you know, this man living everything, you know, living even the money on the table, just because Jesus told him, follow me. Of course, something happened before, 
Of course, he knew Jesus. Of course, he heard. He heard uh, Jesus teaching. Uh, Maria Valtorta says that uh, he used to give uh, money, you know, donations to the apostles, to the disciples, because after that Jesus told, you know, some people left some donation, you know, because, you know, the disciples, they lived only out of profits. So they were only dedicated to preaching the kingdom of God and following Jesus. Uh, and so Matthew was one of those, you know, who contributed, you know, unknowingly. Nobody knew where this money was coming from. It was hidden and uh, was helping. And so then he gave up money, he gives up his wealthy life, but not only that, he gives up his pride, you know. So this man was a tax collector. So, you know, living all that for Jesus, for following Jesus, it was a big change of life, you know, and it takes a lot of courage, a lot of humility. So the obedience of Matthew, again, is a, a great example, just like the obedience of Saul in the first reading. Then, we have Jesus at table with tax collectors and sinners. So here, there is not an obedience, there is a disobedience. We have a disobedience of Jesus, because the law for, forbid, forbade, the law forbade to sit, you know, with tax collectors and sinners. Uh, you remember a couple of days ago, the leper, you know, Jesus was, it was enough for him to say, be cured at the distance, social distance. No, he went there, he approached and he touched the leper. Have you ever thought of touching a leper? Uh, leprosy is not cold, you know, it's something a little bit worse than that. If you touch somebody with leprosy, then your skin you know, will get ruined. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a little one of the, one of the worst diseases. And then you have to go out in the city and you have to live in deserted places and when people are approaching you, you need to shout, you know, it's complicated. Uh, Jesus broke that law. Why? And also he broke the law of uh, staying at a distance. You will never enter in the house of pagans and uh, public sinners, and he does. And then he breaks the law of Sabbath. Because in the South he works miracles. Why Jesus is disobeying? <clears throat> well, first of all, we need to say that he's not scared of sins. Maybe we are more scared of our sins. Sometimes it's so difficult for us to forgive our own sins. Uh, Jesus is not so scared of sins. That's why he says that all the sins, all, will be forgiven. All the sins will be forgiven. So, at the end, what is obedience? So, not only the blind observance of rules. <clears throat> blind observance of rules is dangerous. So, you might uh, find yourself observing rules instead of doing something wrong. Uh, like that time, but I was still a boy, and uh, I said that already, I guess. I was in, in, Fran in France, I was in Lourdes, you know, the, the city of, of the Virgin. And uh, it was the time for a mass. At the beginning there was a preparation, and I was, you know, I was a boy, but I was one of those who helped. And so, one of those French guys, you know, the tall, the big ones, you know, he, the, the one with the red, they have some red thing here, you know, some red strings. Uh, usually, they are blue. You know, blue means you're normal, normal helper. 
but the red, it means that you are a French guy, you know, one of the, a local of the place. And so he said, you know, from here nobody has to cross, because there is going to start mass. So nobody has to cross here. Okay? So nobody crossed there. And then a priest came, because he wanted to go to say mass. And I said, you're not going, because they told me here nobody has to cross. So you see, I obeyed the rule. But I didn't realize that was not the case. This is very common. To make mistakes <coughs> only because we think that we are obeying to God, but we are not obeying to God. We are only obeying to our mind setting. And Jesus is preaching, saying, change your mind. This is repent actually is metanoite, change your mind, change your way of thinking, uh, change from not being narrow-minded to a uh, wider, to a wider vision, the vision of the, the vision of the gospel, the vision of the kingdom of God, that I will <coughs> synthesize I think that the best synthesis is the expression of St. Augustine, and I will leave you with that. St. Augustine said, love and do whatever you want. Love and do whatever you want. If what you do is out of love, then you don't need to pay attention to rule. The rule, yes, you can do any exception that you want, if your goal is to love.